Now this right here is a Boeing 737, which we all know doesn't have two engines, but actually three. Of course, the two jet engines here on the left and right wing, but also a third engine here in the tail, the APU, the auxiliary power unit. It looks like that, it is quite small, but it's very important for making good flighting in an airliner like this. See, when we turn on this airplane right here, we turn on the literal batteries, but they are not very capable, you know, of running, for example, the avionics. Screens are still off. In order to get this airplane going, we need to turn on this very engine right here. Start. Look, and in the outside, we can slowly shut up. We can slowly start to hear a little noise come on. We can see the APU air inlet is open. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Look at that exhaust. Uh, aha. And we can see the APU available light come on. Aha, uh -huh, and we can hear, especially air coming in. The little APU engine provides our airplane now on the ground with air, especially cool air, very good for summers. The generator in this engine provides the airplane with electricity, and for starting up the engine, we turn on the APU bleed, which sends air into the jet engines in order for them to start up. The simple function of the simple APU, which makes ground operations work very well. But one major problem about these APU engines is that they're broken broken all the time. <laughs> and pilots hate that. And actually, passengers hate that as well. Look, it's a hot summer day. We're in Los Angeles. We get into the cockpit and oh no, it says ANOP here on the APU panel, meaning it's just genuinely broken. Now really, this does happen quite a lot. These APU engines are small. They're used quite a lot. And you don't actually need them to fly even though they're very annoying. See, we are in this cold and dark airplane in the summer, which is not cold at all. It is very hot. And the problem is, as I've said already, APU is needed for air conditioning. We practically now have an unair conditioned airplane. The usual APU in-up story of a passenger is when we actually took our seats, though, I noticed the how hot the cabin was. After about 20 minutes of sitting in the seat, the pilot in command came over over the PA and explained that the reason for the delay and the reason for the very hot cabin was due to the APU's unserviceable. And so it couldn't provide cool air or power to start the engines. Now, not to exaggerate, but the APU engine breaks so often that if crew had to switch airplanes every time an APU was broken, flights would have to be delayed so many more times than they are anyway, or will have to be canceled because no other aircraft is available. So most airlines allow flying the airplane without an APU. And so we're gonna do that today, although it is very annoying. Now, the good thing is we're in the flight simulator, so we don't actually experience the heat. We can just just imagine it. Now to actually make this airplane fly, we need a little bit of help from outside world, from the ground crew. Look, ground services, something we need for the electricity is the ground power unit. Something you see quite a lot. It looks like this right here. It is practically a diesel generator. We can hear that. It generates electricity indeed, and it is kind of just plugged into the airplane like a hybrid car. This is great. The ground power unit is often used, you know, even when an airplane is standing on the ground for a long time and you don't want to burn fuel on the APU. It's quite fuel use heavy. So there we go, ground power is available and we're using that. Now, there are ways to, you know, cool the airplane from the outside by using an air conditioning unit of some sort, but this is rarely done, I feel like, because it just takes so long. And it's not simulated here in the airplane, so we're just gonna ignore that. Yes, you could get rid of the heat a little bit, but you know, the GPU and all that, it's just not capable enough of cooling the airplane down. We've got a very hot cabin, but now something that is a major problem is that the engines definitely won't turn on. Like, I can just try to start them up just won't work look that is absolutely dead something we do need now though is an asu the air start unit let's connect it right here and it looks like this and we can hear lots of machinery here this provides now actual bleed air Rheinmetall. That is great. Where is that connected to, I wonder, on this airplane? I just connected to right here. And this will finally allow us to turn on those darn engines. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, now, let's open the valve. I think this should work. We've got pressure here, as you can see. Duct press. And that should give us enough air to make those engines rotate to 20% power. This is how it works. We just press the ground switch here. And now we can see that air is slowly starting to prepare that engine. Yeah, that is working. The air start unit is doing its job. We see N2 compressor is coming up. The inner compressor, that is great. Right now, we're not using any fuel because we haven't added anything to it. And we can now, you know, just get some. Let's pull that off like that. Now, by the way, this procedure you would do presumably after pushback. 
because they don't want to suck anyone in. But there we go. We are starting up an airplane without an APU. That is great. Look, it's working. We can turn on the left engine as well. See if that works. Yeah, and it does work. Look at that. The good thing is we didn't really take a long time there. Everyone would just be dying in heat now. And we can get rid of the ASU and the GPU, of course, since it's not necessary anymore. We can use the generator of the engine. And finally, we can uh, turn on those packs. Oh, yeah. Turn on high. We can hear. We can just hear the cool air. Yeah, as you can see, the air finally coming down. Very good. Now, for our flight, we won't have any, you know, differences to normal. All as well. We're very poorly configurating this. Come on, just take off now. Yes, all is going well. We're using full, full power here. AP went up. No problem. Shut up. Take off. It's fine. Yes, there we go. Look at this. Landing gear up. Now, yes, it is very annoying to fly without an APU, but the question is, is it unsafe? I mean, the APU really does offer some redundancies. For example, what happens if both generators on the engines fail? I mean, this is a 737. It only has one generator per engine. You know, bigger airplanes like the 777, I think, has to be able to fly across oceans, so it has two generators in the uh, engine so they, for backup, right? So this airplane doesn't, it doesn't really fly long distances. What happens if you generator one, generator two, fail, fail, fail? Oh no, what happens now is that we're losing power. We're losing power quite well here and we cannot now turn on APU because it's broken. In real life, you would do that, but still the airplane flies and as long as you're not flying for long distances, this is no problem. For example, the 737 is not allowed to fly without the APU on an ETOPS route that goes over water for over 180 nautical miles without any, you know, diversion airport. You know, this is something that's noted in an airline's MEL, minimum equipment, I don't know what the AN L stands for. Uh, yeah, the minimum equipment list. So yes, there has never been a crash which caused was directly the APU having been off. I mean, okay, if you have, for example, an engine shutdown mid-flight, for example, we've now turned off our right engine and we try to restart it. The normal procedure would be turn on the APU so we can restart that engine. But we can also just windmill it. I mean, look, we're flying at quite a good speed and we can try to restart that engine simply by the wind that's running through it, you know? No, so we uh, turn on ground start. Just put ignition. Come on, work. All right, now we're in trouble. Uh, wasn't this supposed to be? We need more airspeed. Is that the deal? Just go faster now. No, we need more airspeed. We need at least 280 knots, I think, on the Boeing 737 NG. So let's see. Put that left engine to maximum power. And that will, come on, windmill enough air into that engine here. And at 280 knots or so, we should see a restart. Work for me, airplane. Please do. Come on, we're now plenty fast. Give me some power, please. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, look, look. I think I'm seeing it turn on. We can see fuel flow. Fuel is running into the engine. No, no, it's not. Yes, now we're flying proper over speed now. Ah, yes, but that makes the engine turn on. Look at that. We've got temperature. We've got everything going. It is now working, everybody. Um, yes, everybody. I've done a restart. So once again, APU issues, generally not lethal at all, but it is immensely inconvenient to crew and airlines because you need a lot longer to turn on your airplane and the cabin is much hotter. It's just much worse, both for passengers and for pilots. And that's why pilots love the APU. So I thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.